This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, I get artifacts using Project All. Is there a way to fix this? So to start off, I just have ZBrush loaded up, and I have an example file here loaded in. So here we have just a dynamist version of a climbing shoe. And let's say, as an example, that you have this shoe, you have all the details modeled out, and now you need to generate new topology for it. Maybe you want to generate some UVs. So you're going to come through and take this model and use the ZRemesher process to generate new topology. And then you want to project the details from this version of the model onto the ZRemeshed version that has that new topology. So here I just have the high resolution one, and then I have a ZRemeshed version of this model. And this model has just been ZRemeshed, and then it's been divided a few times here to get a rough polygon count above a million. So this one's at 1 1.3 million polys here. So now that I have my ZRemeshed version of my model and my high resolution original, I now want to take those details from that original and project it onto the ZRemeshed version. So the process to do this would be to make sure that you have the ZRemeshed version of your model selected, then turn the visibility on for any other subtool you want to capture the details from, so in this case the Dynameshed version of the shoe, and then you'd navigate to the bottom of the subtool palette here, open up Project, and simply do a Project All. Now after this projection is finished, you may end up getting something like this. So as you can see, it's captured a lot of the details on the shoe here, but then I have these strange artifacts happening elsewhere on the model. So it didn't quite capture all those details. So why is this happening and how can I fix it? So this is happening because the distance of your projection was a little bit too small. And this distance value is controlled by this distance slider over here. So if you're ever doing a projection and you project and it ends up looking like this, one thing you can try is changing this distance to a value of 0.1. So I'm going to undo this projection here, and I'm going to back over here to the distance, and I'm just going to click this and type 0.1 and then hit Enter. And now I'm going to project all again. And after this process is completed, you'll see the distance change did in fact capture most of the details. And usually 90% of the time, just changing this distance slider here to 0.1 rather than 0.01 will often give you the results you're looking for. Now I still have some areas through here that are causing some artifacts, and this is because the ZRemeshed version of this model was still too far in distance related to the slider. So I'm just going to undo this quick and show you a process on how you can fix this. So I'm just undo this. Now before I do this process, another thing I want to do for the ZRemeshed version of the model is to store a morph target. Now by storing a morph target here, I'll be able to use the morph brush and polish out areas that may get affected or generate spikes during the projection process. So to store a morph target, I'm going to go to the tool palette, I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom here to the morph target area, and then I'm simply just going to click store morph target. Now I'm going to go back up to the subtool palette here, and I'm just going to do that project all again. So here we are back to the version with that distance set to one. So you can see it's got all the details except for those buckles again. So I need to come through now and refine these buckles here and then reproject these areas. So if I turn off solo here, so you can see both these models together, you can see that the areas that are getting this artifacting are below the surface geometry. So we need to come through and kind of scrub these up or raise the geometry on these areas. So when we do this project again, it'll be able to capture those details correctly. So I'm gonna go back and activate solo again. And now I'm going to switch to that morph brush. So I'm going to go to the brush palette over here. I'm going to isolate by the letter M, and now I'm just going to select the morph brush. And since we stored a morph target of this tool before we did the projection, if I use the morph target on this mesh, it's going to return the model back to the original state it was in before I applied the projection. So I can come through and just morph out that area. And I'm going to do this to both of these buckle areas where the problem was happening. Just scrubbing these out really quick. Now, after you have these areas scrubbed out, you can also come through and use Shift to smooth these out. So holding down Shift and smoothing out those areas. And then now I'm going to disable Solo again so I can see the two models together. And you'll notice these areas here that geometry is still lower than the buckle. So I need to raise the geometry in this area. So you can use the Move brush for this, or as I like to do, I'll select the Clay Buildup brush. So I'm going to go over here to the brush palette, and then I'm going to select Clay Buildup. 
And now I'm gonna get a pretty large brush size here, and I'm just gonna start on an area of the model and just start scrubbing the surface like this. So I'm just trying to raise the topology of the Z-remeshed model here, so it engulfs the Dynameshed version. So just coming through and scrubbing this area like this. And you can do this as much as you want. It really doesn't need to be too terribly accurate. You just need to kind of engulf areas and then you can come back through and smooth. And this process here is just going to help with the projection. So it's just gonna give you a little more topology and a little better surface to work with. So just coming through and scrubbing these areas too. Something like this. And around these buckles is definitely a tricky area for this version of the model. So just coming in and making sure those are engulfed and especially these seam areas through here. And now that we have something like this, we're just going to do that project all again. So I'm going to turn back on solo just so you can just see the Ziri meshed model here. And now I'm going to click project all again. And after this is complete, I'm now getting a result like this. So you can see it's come through and given me a way better projection on those buckles. So this is more what I'm looking for. Now another thing you can do as well is instead of projecting the entire model, which may take quite some time if your model has lots and lots of polygons, is that you can use masking to only project certain areas. So if I come to the E here on the Evolve thing here, and I just scrub this out, and let's say I want to reproject this E and the V again, I can come through and just mask this part of the model and then holding control and clicking off the model to invert that mask. And now when I do this project process again, it's only going to project the details from the high resolution model to this area of the mesh. And this will help with speeding up the projection process. So now if I do project all on this, it's only gonna project the high resolution details to that area. The process for that took a lot less time than trying to project the entire shoe. So if you run into areas that are still giving you troublesome details, you can just mask it out, smooth it out, do the project again, and see if that gives you a better result, and just keep manipulating the topology until you get the surface polished out so it engulfs the other version of the mesh. So I hope that helps, and if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing!